Hello, with me today I have Badim Alexander, healthcare analyst at SP Angel. Hi Badim. Hi. The healthcare sector is incredibly active right now, um, what with the coronavirus pandemic and its impact on the health of the world population. Now, the biggest trend since February has been COVID-19 and the star of that expanding niche has been a company called Novasite. Now, few would have even heard of the company this time last year, but now it's grabbing all the headlines and it's the best performing stock of 2020. Now, uh, just to give a bit of background, the shares were trading at around six pence a year ago and they just exceeded 12 pounds. So that's an eye-watering gain of 21,000% in just 12 months. Now, you've watched this happen from a front row seat because you're one of the company's advisors and joint broker. Now, you work for the company, so that gives you a great insight into its business and future prospects. So, look, I've got lots of questions for you, Vadim, but I think, first of all, it'd be very useful if you could explain to viewers exactly what Novasite does and why it's so special. Perfect. So, Novasite is a diagnostic test manufacturer. So they, they develop tests for all kinds of things, uh, but uh, one of the areas that, they're spe that they specialize in is infectious disease. Um, and the reason Novasite has done so well in the last year is because they were one of the first manufacturers of uh, a test to, to test for SARS-CoV-2, which is the virus that uh, is uh, behind COVID-19. So they started that test, they're developing that test early on when the pandemic was just beginning in China. Uh, and as a result, once, you know, as this pandemic, pandemic started to spread, the virus started to spread outside of China, they already had a test up and running. They got regular, one of the first to get regulatory approval for that test. Uh, and then I guess the rest is kind of history. They, they, they were the first to start selling the test. Um, uh, they were exporting the test. Uh, and in the UK, they were um, one of the first to start supplying the government with the test. I mean, it's, it's, it's one for quite a few contracts. So, I mean, who, who's it actually working for at the moment? So the, more recently, they had a big second contract, actually, with uh, the Department of Health here in the UK. So they're one of the primary suppliers to the NHS. Now, originally back in uh, April, I think, or even a bit earlier, March, April time, uh, the, the, uh, the NHS needed tests, right? We, we all know the, how desperate the world was for tests, particularly here in the UK, or the UK government needed to find tests. Um, and the problem is that globally, everyone was trying to find these tests at the same time. So what, what that resulted in was a bit of a bottleneck in reagents. So most nations had to go to domestic, you know, turn to, to, to domestic production. So they were one of the first to produce these tests. So they signed, a te they signed an agreement with uh, the, the Department of Health. It's the DHSC is, is the acronym of the Department of Health. Um, first to get tests into centralized labs. So the first tests that were rolled out were, you know, you get a test, a swab done, and then you get it sent to, the, to a central lab and it gets processed and you get an answer within 24 hours or, or a bit longer initially. Um, so that was the first contract they got with the Department of Health. And then more recently, they had uh, another contract, uh, 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 another bigger contract, which runs at the same time. Uh, it runs, you know, you, you, the centralized lab testing continues. But this one is to get um, a more uh, a localized test done. This is, this is at the point, what's known as at the point of need. So what you have here is uh, testing being done in hospitals. And that was a pretty big contract. It was a 250 million pound contract. So, so I'm, I'm just trying to, I, I, and I, I think a lot of viewers will think, well, look, from six pence to over 12 pounds per share is quite phenomenal. And you know, they, they've won some big contracts and what have you. But but why has the share price risen so far and so fast? And I guess, is it justified? Well, I think it is. Um, and well, it's, it's a question of scale. So the, the, as you might imagine, so let me give you a bit of um, a few parameters on revenues that I think support that kind of share price rise. So last year, in the year ending 2019, the company did about just over 10 million in revenue, I think 10 or 12 million pounds in revenue. Um, this year, at the interim mark, they did uh, about 72 million, sorry, euros, all, all in euros, 72 million euros in revenue. Uh, and the, the most recent contract with the DHSC, with the, the Department of Health, which they struck just last month, uh, and, and a lot of it is to be deployed still in 2020, uh, is for 250 million pounds. 
So, you know, it gives you a bit of a flavor for what size of revenues we're talking about. I mean, this has been a step change. It's, it's a revenue surge, uh, an unprecedented revenue surge uh, for the business. I mean, they're, they're looking at um, uh, some of, you know, the forecasts out there are revenues up to 300 million, nearing 300 million euros for this year. So, you know, at 70, 75, call it ballpark, 72 million euros at the interim mark, up on 10 million last year for the full year or whatever, 10 to 12 million last year. So you're looking at a, whatever that is, a 30 time surge in revenues this year. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, it's a substantial surge in revenues. Uh, and then these tests are, have carry high margins. Uh, at the interims, I think the margins were about 80, 85%. So whatever that was, 82, 83% margin, gross margin. So, you know, a lot of this revenue drops straight to the bottom line. So the company is, you know, the, 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 uh, the company is seeing this incredible surge in revenues and profits. And that's, that's what's justifying this, this leap forward. I might say they're not alone, uh, as in other companies listed on the London Stock Exchange have seen a huge surge as well in their stock prices. Um, and, uh, you know, not quite as justified in that they haven't seen the revenues coming through yet because they're still either developing the test or getting it approved or are in the early days of manufacturing it, their tests, their respective tests. So I think Novasite is kind of well-placed because they were a first mover, because they're delivering these tests and because they're already seeing the revenues come through on these tests. The company's now, well, approaching 900 million, well over 800 million pounds yeah. uh, Novasite is worth at the moment. Mm -hmm. So I'm just wondering, is there another catalyst that might trigger further increases? And, and sort of, I mean, what could Novasite eventually be worth? So yeah, so basically the, 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 the more recent catalyst, the first catalyst was seeing the revenues come through from the first uh, Department of Health contract, which is for centralized testing. That continues, that's continuing at pace. The second catalyst that drove the shares, I'd say, up to above one pound, um, uh, sorry, 10 pounds, is, uh, was the second contract from the DHSC. Now that contract stipulates a potential second phase. So the first phase was 250 million pounds, for 300 machines and the subsequent pull through on these machines of tests, okay? And the machines are not where the lion's share of the revenue is, it's, it's, it's the actual razor blade, which is the test pull through. So they have a minimum purchase contract with the, with the Department of Health, which got you to that 250 million pounds, gets you to that 250 million pounds. But the contract also stipulates a second phase, which is another 700 machines. Now these machines are gonna be rolled out uh, primarily to uh, NHS hospitals. There's about 1,300 hospitals in the UK. So, you know, if with the 300 first work and it all goes to plan, you would imagine the triggering of the second, the second contract, the second phase of the contract. If that gets triggered, then I can see these shares rallying substantially further because it'll be just by definition, a larger contract than the 300 machines. Because, you know, whatever, you can prorate that, maybe, maybe not 100% prorated, but you can prorate it at least as a doubling of the primary of the first contract because it's more than twice as many machines. And you mentioned machines, and I guess this goes back to just clearing up what Novasite does. Yeah. It sort of, does, it, does it make the machines? Does it just produce the tests? Does it do both? Yeah, so let me get a little more granular on specifically what, you know, how they do these tests. So it's a, it's a well-known technique, it's a PCR. So what you do is your test goes onto a machine that amplifies the uh, the genomic sequence of the virus, and that amplification allows you to then identify to to, to then uh, it it, uh, it it's what identifies the virus because as you might imagine you have very low sample uh, very small amounts of virus viral uh, uh, genomic sequences in the actual original sample so you need to amplify it via this technique which is PCR to get it to a level where you can identify it. So that's a well-established technology in molecular diagnostics. It's what they're doing in the central lab. Uh, so in these centralized labs, it's the same technique. Their test is all of the reagents that come, it's all, it, it's essentially the reagents that come in vials that you put on these machines. And then if you have, and then you take the viral sample, you put it in, in, in these vials, the machine then runs the test and then tells you whether, whether you have the virus or not. What they're doing more recently with the second contract, with the with the D the second phase of this D or the, sorry the second DHSC contract, which is the Department of Health contract, is that they're now they have these PCR machines which they're putting into hospitals now. So instead of the hospitals having to send the tests to centralized labs to run these tests, they can do them in place in a hospital. 
the machine is being brought out of the central lab, if you like, to the hospital location. It's, it's what's known as uh, at the point of need, testing at the point of need. And it, it, as you might imagine, it you know, radically accelerates the turnaround time on the testing. So that's what, that's what their machines are. They're, they're effectively PCR machines, uh, which run their own tests. Is there any other company supplying the NHS? Or is, is, what, what, is, what is the competition? Is Novasite facing sort of competition from other suppliers? So yeah, there's a lot of people moving into this, as you might have, a lot of you know, other manufacturers that make tests and a lot of uh, new players and new technologies emerging in this space. But what I would say is, and this, you know, this brings, I guess, investors thinking, to, to think about one thing. So how long will the pandemic last? How long will these tests be needed? Well, right now we're still underserved. Uh, you, know, you, you remember initially in this, so if you think about it from domestic terms in the UK, we initially had a crunch during the first wave where there weren't enough tests. We've all seen the headlines. It was a big problem for, for the government. It then caught up by getting you know, manufacturers such as Novocyte being one of the primary manufacturers to get these tests rolled out. And then in come uh, September, there was a second crunch again because uh, you know, kids were turning to schools, everybody started testing again. And you know, it wasn't that long ago, if you remember, uh, people had to drive you know, five, 10 miles to get a test. So th this is kind of part of that second phase of, of getting more tests out again. So the, this is, you know, the, the, it wasn't very long after that, that the Department of Health gave Novacyte this, this second big contract. So as you can see, testing is still ramping up. We still are, we still lack testing capability uh, and Novacyte is filling that void, okay? So then the question becomes, you know, when does that point, when does that point come where there's, and there's more suppliers coming into the picture that we know, which is which was your question, but but they're still not filling the, the gap of the need for testing. So demand is still increasing faster than supply is what is where I'm going with this. Now the question becomes when does you know the supply meet that demand and, and when does the demand start to come off? Now currently we're in the phase where supply is still not meeting demand, and Novacite is the primary player because they have a test that's approved that they're rolling out and they're rolling it out now at the point of need. Other suppliers are, are catching up and we'll, we'll wait and see what happens. I would say that there's one thing to, to keep in mind is that new technologies that aren't proven really in, you know, mass product, in terms of mass production and then large scale deployment, uh, I would be a little more suspicious of that because they may just not get to market on time. So that's, that's my, main, my main point in terms of uh, competing, competing technologies, competing suppliers. Now, I guess the big question for Novasite and the companies like it, uh, and for investors wondering whether to buy at the current share price or or current shareholders tempted to sell um, some or all of what they have, yeah. is what happens when the COVID vaccine um, begins to roll out. I mean, that, that could happen over the, the next few months. We just don't know. Now, does business dry up when a, a cure is found or you know, what, what happens next? Yeah, so basically the COVID vaccine First of all, you know, there are many vaccines in the pipeline and there's been many warnings about vaccines won't be silver bullets, right? So that's the first thing. So we know that, uh, you know, we'd be very lucky if we had the first vaccine work perfectly well. Alongside that, even when there is a vaccine that works, you still need to be testing. We're going to be testing for a long time, I think, to come. Um, and that's, you know, for at least the foreseeable year, so at least well into 21, we're going to need to be doing testing probably at higher levels than we're doing now. Uh, and the government's still ramping up to do so. Okay. The second thing is that as um, th th there is this com complexity of the, the double burden of flu with, uh, with COVID at the same time this winter and in future winters as well, in that you may still need to be doing uh, what's known as, you know, a distinguishing, a test that distinguishes between the two viruses and other respiratory viruses, by the way. Um, so I can't help but think that we're going to be, there's going to be a new normal of baseline testing that emerges post this pandemic. In fact, I mean, if you think about it, uh, you know, it's, it's quite surprising. We didn't, we haven't tested for other viruses, admittedly because they weren't as lethal. Um, but, you know, I think our, the whole world has changed in, in, in terms of perception around testing. And, you know, most hospitals will probably be testing against a, uh, you know, a battery of viruses 
when someone comes in with flu-like or COVID-like symptoms. And it's important because you need to know which way to treat these patients because the treatment pathway is different for flu as it is for COVID-19 or other viruses. So I think testing is here to stay, maybe not at these peak levels. Um, you know, we expect the testing will drop off, probably not, you know, anytime soon. So I, for us, it's well into 21, uh, you know, that could even be longer, but, and then it'll drop down to a new baseline, which is much higher than where we were before this pandemic. So Novasite is not a flash in the pan, you're saying, and it's we're, we're going to be hearing and about and reading about a lot more about Novasite in the months to come. That's what we expect. And, and so far it has proven to be the case because people were thinking, you know, that this was going to be a flash in the pan back in March, April, May, you know, the crisis got worse in terms of testing. You know, we, 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 we never quite resolved testing. And, and we, we saw that in September uh, when, when people went back to school, you know, there was another uh, pinch point in testing. And yet we all, we had by that point, six months of preparation. When I say we, I mean governments, you know? Um, so, no, I, I don't think it's, a, I didn't think then it was a flash in the pan and, you know, the stock prices rallied quite substantially even after the first wave. I think it came back down in, in June to some 300p or something like that. And look, it's up four times since then today. So, you know, do, do I think this is sustained? It will be sustained for at least a year, uh, uh, you know, at these levels, in, even with a vaccine, because we will need to continue testing to know, you know, A, whether these vaccines work in practice, you know, that we, we may have vaccines that work in clinic, which, you know, which is what we all want. But then when, as they're rolled out, first of all, we all know the rollout isn't going to take a day. It won't even take a quarter. It'll probably take, you know, somewhere up to half a year, if not more. And it'll be phased, right? It'll be, it'll go to uh, frontline workers first and it'll go to the, the people that are most uh, at risk. Uh, and by the time we all get vaccinated, you know, that's, that'll be well into 2021. In the meantime, we need to be testing that whole time at ever increasing capacity. You know, so the, the testing demand, as I was saying earlier, is still going up and it's still ahead of supply. And are there opportunities overseas for, for Novasite? Big contracts with the NHS. But what about what about overseas, America, those sorts of places? Absolutely. So, yeah, definitely. And, and they, ha they are selling overseas. And I expect to, to, to see more of that. I think if there's an area of two areas that are triggers uh, for further, you know, further rallies in the shares are the triggering of that sec of that second phase of the second contract, the DHSC contract, that's the 700 machines I was telling you about. So that's one big trigger. And then the second one that can come out of more out of left field, uh, because, you know, th these contracts can land at any moment is uh, a foreign contract. You know, they're, they're making inroads into the US into places like Brazil and elsewhere. Meanwhile, they are selling internationally. Uh, so yeah, so I, I you're absolutely correct that over and above these huge contracts in the UK, they have potential for big contracts uh, internationally. I think that's been a, a, a fascinating insight into uh, you know, what's been driving Novasite's uh, uh, incredible run over the past uh, 12 months. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you.